YouTube is really subscribe to 60 Dark King and today we are going to finally get back to death battles with this live reaction and let's watch. So today is the Treasure Hunters, Warcraft and Nathan Drake, the two video game Indiana Jones. So disclaimer, this is purely for Christian purposes and as such is protected under the law of fair use. I have no interest in any copyright shenanigans whatsoever. So Without further ado, let's get to it. And play. This episode of Death Battle is brought to you by At... Go90, the free digital entertainment service featuring TV shows, original series, esports, concerts, live sports, and behind the scenes access to some of your favorite musical artists. Watch Go90 free on your phone, tablet, laptop, or cast your TV. Visit go90.com or <laughs> download the app on your iOS or Android device today and be sure to check out Rooster Teeth's new original series, What Do You Know? Exclusively on Go90. Okay, ads out. Oh, that's new. Nice. Sometimes an archaeologist needs a bit more than a shovel and brush, especially when they're on the hunt for the most legendary of treasure. Yeah, if it were that easy, everyone would be doing it. The best <laughs> treasure hunters are the ones with the brawn to match their brain. Like Lara Croft, the Tomb Raider. And Nathan Drake, seeker of the Uncharted. He's like I said, the video game and Indiana Jones. And job to analyze their weapons, Jones, armor, and skills Jones, to find out who would win a death battle. Jones, Most people spend their entire lives in pursuit of wealth, status, and power. But Lara Croft was lucky enough to be born into them. However, despite attending the best schools and living in her own mansion, she was missing one crucial thing. Adventure. <laughs> Man, rich people are always looking for some crazy way to help keep themselves entertained. But if you have a lot of money and you take a lot of trips, it's good odds that one of those trips is bound to go horribly wrong. Yeah, and no kidding. guess what? It did. Before she was even old enough to order a drink, a crash landing left her stranded in desolation. She had to learn for herself how to adapt and survive for over a week before returning to civilization as a whole new lady. In whatever Tomb Raider timeline you're looking at, whether it's on an island or the Himalayas, Lara's <laughs> destined to this life-changing fate. I'm never getting on a plane with her. Surprisingly, <laughs> Lara's experience left her far from traumatized. Instead, she was inspired, hooked by the thrill of perilous adventure. So she struck out on her own, seeking lost treasure across the globe to make a name for herself. But Lara's no fool, so first <laughs> she made sure she'd be ready for anything. She tracked down the best teachers she could find to learn her the ways of stealth, survival, and martial arts. She became proficient in numerous types of firearms, and her martial art of choice appears very reminiscent to kickboxing. She can even fight while Not blindfolded. So Not she's bad at all. basically Batman, who treasure hunts <laughs> with guns. Speaking of which, Lara is famous for her trademark dual Heckler and Koch pistols. And I'm not talking about the things under her sweater. But she's also skilled with shotguns, assault rifles, submachine guns, even grenades. And she uses them to take down everything from armed thugs to T-Rexes. Lara is also skilled with a competition Seriously. compound bow, perfect for stealth kills. And yeah. she's got enough trick arrows to make Green Arrow proud. She's got fire arrows, poison arrows, explosive tipped arrows, and even rope arrows for crossing gaps or grappling things. And while her climbing axe is supposed to be used for scaling up cliffs, yeah, you who are kidding? What the thing does to a human skull. <laughs> oh wait, you don't have to. Watch. <laughs> yeah, like I said. Lovely. Why are we kidding? With some murder aside, Lara's extensive training paid off in big ways. She's discovered the legendary blade Excalibur, the Philosopher's Stone, the Ark of the Covenant, Thor's hammer Mjolnir, and even <laughs> Bigfoot, whom she also promptly killed. Look at Sasquatch. She survived dinosaurs, the Kraken, a Chinese dragon, and she even found the long lost Led Zeppelin song Stairway to Heaven. What? No, no, no. The she heck? found a literal stairway to heaven. Really? Holy shit. For a 132 pound woman, she's surprisingly strong. She's held up a heavy gate for 36 straight seconds while drowning. She also regularly wow. pushes around enormous boulders, like the giant blocks in the Pyramid of Giza. This makes her easily strong enough to, say, punch a man through a wooden beam. Lara's also a crack shot. She can precisely tag multiple targets in less than a second, even if they're button-sized bolts or kunai flying through the air. She's skilled enough to infiltrate and escape Area 51. She's tenacious enough to take a bullet in the heat of battle and keep fighting, 
and she's tough enough to dive off a 250 foot cliff into water with no injury whatsoever. The highest documented dive ever recorded is 193 feet. But unlike Lara, this driver underwent weeks of preparation and still broke his collarbone. Hell, this girl can survive almost anything. When she was younger, she got impaled by a rusty metal spike and was Ow. still able to complete an entire adventure while in constant pain. She wasn't even able to properly treat it. She had to cauterize it with a burning arrow tip. Damn, that's hardcore. I yeah, think I ow. found my next ex-wife. And then there was that one time she threw <coughs> a climbing axe at a helicopter and it just... It just exploded. <laughs> yeah, the only logical explanation being she threw the axe into the chopper's air intake, shredded its internals, which caused a spark that reached its gas tank. She made the helicopter explode with <laughs> nothing but an axe. That girl's got one hell of an arm. I think we can all agree Lara is a badass, but she thinks so too, and can get a bit reckless. If she gets you too think? full of it, she can always find herself at the wrong end of a tree branch, crushed by boulders, mauled by wolves, shot in the head, stabbed through the face, all sorts of horrific fatal mistakes. Even knowing that, the risk doesn't keep her from any of her bewildering adventures. Oh, the tears. Don't you think you've seen enough? <laughs> Sick Parvis Magna. To most people, these words hold little meaning, but for globetrotting explorer Nathan Drake, it's his life motto. Greatness from small beginnings. And beginnings don't get much smaller than his. Little Nate spent half his childhood in a boy's home, where he was raised by his nuns, class? picked huh. on by bullies, and pretty much just hated on for every second of his life. <coughs> Nathan found solace in his fascination with history, particularly the explorer who found El Dorado, Sir Francis Drake. And like his idol, Nathan dreamed of one day escaping the orphanage to go on treasure hunts of his own. And he did, with his big brother Sam. The treasure? They're dead mom's old journals about Mr. Drake himself. Turns out they were in some old lady's house, so they broke in, she called the cops, and then immediately died of a heart attack. Obviously yeah. not wanting to be that caught trespassing and standing over a dead woman when the police arrived, Nathan began a life on the run. Talk about shitty luck. Man, all he wanted was a book. Fortunately, Nathan seemed born for the treasure hunter's life. He's exceptionally athletic, has encyclopedic historical knowledge, and can find a way out of almost any bad situation with his quick wit. Ow. He'd make sure that everyone would remember the name, Nathan Drake. <laughs> After several solo adventures, Nathan eventually teamed up with Victor Sullivan, a former Navy officer turned expert con artist. Sully taught Nathan the ways of combat, both with his fists and with firearms. Good thing, too, because it seems like everybody out there wants to take a <coughs> shot at Nate. He almost always has a 45 Defender or 9mm pistol on hand, as well as a couple grenades. Nate of can course. rack up the body count with just about any weapon he touches, including machine guns, shotguns, grenade launchers, and sniper rifles. Hey, when there's a literal army of bad guys out to kill you, you gotta become a one-man army yourself. Ready for anything, Nathan set out to follow in his idol's footsteps, and then some. He's discovered five lost civilizations, stopped multiple world-ending threats, and even unlocked the secret of El Dorado like Sir Francis Drake before him. Yeah, turns out it's not a city of gold, just a dead guy that turns people into zombies. Well, interesting. Didn't see that one coming. Anyway, Nate wouldn't have done any of those things if he weren't physically fit for the job. He's strong enough to move boulders twice his size and hold up a four-ton gate for four seconds. Damn! He can climb huge cliffs with nothing but his fingertips and constantly jumps humongous gaps without needing a running start. The standing broad jump world record is 12 feet and 3 inches. In this instance, Nathan Drake was able to make a 19 foot jump from a standstill. 19 feet! And he's always yeah. clearing similar jumps throughout his adventures. Nate's got hops, but he's also got an iron hide. The dude is constantly falling dozens of feet and just shaking it off. Like that time he did a 40-foot belly flop and got right Ooh. back up like it was nothing. That could kill a normal Damn. guy. Nathan Drake is nothing if not determined. When he found himself cornered on a train and bleeding out from a bullet wound, his solution was to simply blow the whole thing to oblivion. <laughs> a convenient pile of propane tanks. But of course, he survived the crash and even climbed to safety, despite having no way of knowing he'd get out of this whole mess alive at all. On top of all that, look what he's wearing. 
It's freezing up there! Actually, explosions generally seem to be his exit of choice. Like when he <laughs> blew up a cargo plane while flying over Saudi Arabia. After surviving the trip to the ground, he wandered the desert for two straight days with zero food or water. But even with all that, when he found a bunch of mercenaries who wanted to kill him, he was still able to fight them off. How is this guy real? What kind of deal did he make with Satan? <laughs> he should know that that stuff comes with a terrible price. Believe me. All of this just proves how careless and haphazard Nathan really is. This man rarely, if ever, has a plan for anything at any point. Nearly every moment of his life, whether he's in or out of danger, Nathan's philosophy insists that he simply roll with whatever punches come his way. When it comes down to it, much of his survivability can be chalked up to an abundance of good luck. And also his incredible knack for improvising and adapting. Lucky or not, hundreds if not thousands of bad guys have tried to beat him to some treasure and lost. It's good odds that if you go up against Nathan Drake, you're not just gonna lose that treasure, you're gonna lose your life. What the hell did you do back there? Oh, well, you know, save the world. <laughs> yeah, the usual. All right, the combatants are set. So... Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, I'm gonna tell you how to save your relationship. Again. Wow. Yeah, screw that. Anyway, I'm going to talk over him. Just saying. Whatever. Like I was saying, they seem very evenly matched, so... I don't know. They're both human. They have a, a, a damn habit of not dying when they should. I mean, Drake seemed a bit stronger, but only a bit. So I'm going in with Drake on this one. Who knows? Okay, let's see which of the two Indiana Jones of video games gets the gold. Oh right, he's still in the ad. Anyway. Okay, almost there. Okay, let's dance. <laughs> nice. Damn, it's cold up here. Okay, let's try. <laughs> well, that was easy. <laughs> gotcha. Stop! Turn around. Slowly. Oh, the Holy Grail. Ah, well, of course. Uh, hey there. Uh, I'm guessing the whole finder's keepers rule isn't gonna apply. Cut the chit chat. The Grail's coming with me. Either walk away or die right here. Choose wisely. Okay, Missy. First rule about me. I don't walk away. What the? Uh, it never fails. I get to the gold at the end of the rainbow and somebody tries to kill me. <laughs> I think she can relate. Scratch. Do you know what you've done? Because of That's probably not good. Okay, that's definitely not good. You think? How the heck 
did she get to, to her motorcycle so fast? Not a scratch. Kyo! <laughs> wow, that happened. Oh, nice shot! Told you she had a good arm. Laura and Nathan have both displayed impressive feats of strength, durability, agility, and weapon skills. But Laura tended to have the edge in every category. Both of them were way stronger than you'd think. Nathan shoved a boulder large enough to weigh 20 tons. That means he literally had the strength of 10 men. But in Lara's case, she moved several limestone blocks used in the Great Pyramids. Not only did she move them much farther distances than Nathan, but given their size and makeup, these blocks should weigh over 27 tons each. Lara's oh. way tougher too, and has been through things that definitely would have taken Nate out. Like when she was impaled by rebar, but was still able to accomplish everything necessary to survive a hostile island for a week. Nathan suffered a bullet wound in the same area of the body. And while he powered through the pain for a short time, he soon passed out and was unconscious while under intensive care for three days. Take my word for it, I've been through pretty much everything you can think of, and I'd rather take a bullet than rebar any day. And that rebar thing happened when Lara was pretty young. Later, she got all sorts of combat and survival training from experts, while Nate was mostly self-taught, with a few pointers every so often from a con man. Also, when the pressure's really on, Lara manages to always keep a cool head, much better than Nate. So, you got a plan C? Yeah, floor it. What? I'm getting on that train. <laughs> What are you, crazy? Nathan Drake did just about everything by the seat of his pants, and eventually, luck always runs out. Yeah, she was just too crafty for him. The winner is Seriously. Lara Croft. Wow. Okay, who's next? Next time on Death Battle. Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, this I've got to see. I guess who? Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our well, season we'll four premiere. I'm Ben. I play Wiz. I'm Chad. I play Boomstick. And next time we've got Scrooge McDuck versus. Well, you gotta find out by sticking to our Twitter, that's at ScrewAttack, or our Facebook, Official SA. And if you wanna be the first to watch Death Battle, you can always become a first member by clicking the link in the description below and start a 30 day free trial. It's a great way to support the show. Thanks. <laughs> well, that was fun. I call the grappling hook bow, but whatever. They have to point that the battle itself is the result of the research, not the battle itself. Anyway, that was quite a fun battle. Mouse, horrendously animated aside, fluid, good animation. And I was wrong. Again. Eh, it happens. Anyway, people, I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, see you around. Ta-ta.